Okay, well, let's see, uh, what's the date today? The 19th. 19th of January. Uh, we haven't been into these colonies since last October. I don't know what to expect. I have some ideas. I think they'll be a little light because we had a really warm November and the bees flew a lot. And normally that'll uh, use up a lot of stores as compared to cooler weather. I know that sounds kind of odd, that, but they actually use uh, less stores in cooler weather than they do if it warms up because they just kind of stay home and chill out and don't use up fuel. Um, we're going to put pollen patties and some feed on these colonies. We're going to try to get them fired up a little early. We have about six yards down in this area. This, this area is out of the mountains. It's on the upper Piedmont of Georgia. It's uh, south of our shop and the elevation's lower and the season's earlier. The maple trees are going to be blooming here in about a month, so we'll have a real live pollen flow here in about a month. And the pollen patties and the feed that we're going to put on today are just going to kind of get them started early. It, uh, it won't really fire up brood rearing in, 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 uh, in, in full form until the real pollen starts to come in. A lot of people think that putting a pollen patty on is very stimulative and gets bees rearing brood. It's really better at maintaining brood. It, uh, if the bees are inclined to rearing, to, if the bees are inclined to rear brood, giving them a pollen patty will allow them to do so. We've already been to two other yards today and, and we can see clearly that there is no pollen in the comb even though last fall they had a pretty good goldenrod flow. Yes. Um, I'm surprised to see zero pollen in there. I guess that was probably from the warm weather in November. They probably went ahead here. and reared brood for a little longer than normal. Right. So uh, I, uh, uh, we're using Ultra B from Man Lake. Uh, we purchased the preformed uh, patties or one pound patties and 40 pound box one pound patties I, I'm often asked why we don't mix our own and I have done that in the past but uh, we just got so much going on right now I don't need one more iron in the fire so we just buy the preformed patties from Man Lake and the Ultra B is really one of the better products out there and plus I'm a Man Lake dealer so I get a really good price it makes the pr makes the cost a little more palatable it's been a long time since the bees were able to fly. This is the first day where the bees are really uh, able to get out and fly, and they're not flying much now. It's not really warm yet. It's about 50 degrees, I guess. I yeah. feel like about 50 degrees. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, probably be a lot of bee pooping going on today. <laughs> that that nice white bee suit of yours, uh, Seth, is going to start having a bunch of brown dots on it here pretty soon. <laughs> But uh, we're going to check these colonies out. Uh, I think they're, they should be in pretty good shape. We fed them a lot of sugar syrup last fall, but again, I think they probably burned through a lot of it. Um, we've just got one gallon buckets and jars. If we hit, run across a really small colony, we'll give them a jar of food, and uh, the bigger ones will get a gallon just to get them through for now. So uh, we're going to put on some lids that have a rim on them, which will um, accept the pollen patty. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a pollen patty between a flat lid and the top bars on a single story box. When we put pollen patties in our double story boxes, uh, brood boxes, we just put the patty in the middle so there's no problem there. So we're going to dive in, see what, the, see what they all look like. Turns out we got boxes of uh, bulk patty. For some reason I thought we had the ones with the wax paper in between, but it's okay. The bulk patty works just as well. It's just a little messier. So John, you can kind of meter it out with a live tool. Just, I think you can kind of tell when you think you got a one-pound patty. I want to say we got some uh, good-looking bees so far. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's see how heavy that colony is. Oh, it's still got some weight to it. This one's a little smaller. A little 
little curious if they started rearing brood yet, so I'm going to poke around and see what's going on. There hasn't been any pollen coming in. They haven't been even been getting out to fly, so... Yeah, there is a little brood, actually. It's a small amount of brood. So, they started rearing brood even though they've had no pollen coming in. I've, uh, I've heard beekeepers debate in the past whether it's an increase in daylight or a, uh, a pollen coming in that stimulates them into rearing brood in midwinter. And I actually think it's a little bit of both. Um, the, the change in daylight definitely has a effect on them. Um, about 10 years ago, I had some bees down in Florida, and it was the middle of November, and they, they were down south of Lakeland, Florida. I, they were rearing just a little bit of brood, even though there was zero pollen coming in. They were maintaining about a frame or a frame and a half of brood in mid-November. And when I moved them up to South Central Georgia, um, they immediately stopped rearing brood. And I believe it was because they lost about 10 or 15 minutes of daylight when they moved that far north. That very same week, I moved some yards of bees down from the mountains into the same area there in South Central Georgia. And they had stopped rearing brood about two weeks earlier and they immediately started again. And then after about a week, they stopped. So. I think the bees coming down from the mountains fired up because they gained daylight and the bees that were coming up from Florida stopped rearing brood because they lost daylight. And uh, about a week later, both of them were not rearing brood and then they started up again just before Christmas. So uh, a combination of an increase in daylight and a little bit of pollen and syrup added to them will get them going. But they won't really fire into high gear until that real pollen flow starts in about a month. That'll kick them into high gear then. They love that maple pollen. Plus a little nectar comes in on the maple too. I think you've all been to get up to it coming to the side. That is a nice one. Okay, we can have that right, right there. That work, that works pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's about the same thickness as a patty. Okay. I'm trying to put it over the brood nest there, make sure that they get yeah get it good and covered there. Yeah. I'll put a little bit more over here. These guys are big. Okay, turned out pretty good. We didn't have one dead colony. Of course, there might be a couple that are queenless and we just don't know it yet because they're really not rearing brood much. Uh, we'll come back in two weeks and look at them again. At that time, we should be able to figure out which ones have a laying queen and which ones don't. And we'll feed them again, give them another round of pollen patties, and then they'll probably be good until the maple starts to flow two weeks after that. Okay, so this yard got pollen patties and rims about two weeks ago. It was actually the first yard we did. And they've been eating it up. They've got a little brood in them, too. This little nuke that's on top has been eating up their little quarter-pound patty. I'll take them apart and see what kind of brood they got. They're not very big. They are rearing brood. There's the queen. Yeah, so that was effective. They're, they've been rearing brood with the patty. Like I said earlier, the patties are really good at allowing them to rear brood if they're so inclined. They don't stimulate like real pollen coming in. And the bees will rear brood with them.
So we give the bottom half a one pound of pollen patty, an inside feeder, gallon and a half, fill it up, and then this little three quarter inch rim right here. Okay. And then the nuke goes back on top. Looks like they ate about half of their patty. Well, actually, they ate. That's another patty. They ate their patty from last time. Okay. I would expect that gallon and a half to be gone when we come back in two weeks. Okay, this yard got pretty much the same routine. Nukes on top are pretty small, just a two frame nukes, but they'll make it. The heat coming from the bottom really helps. Okay, see the, these small nukes that are getting a jar, we're just giving them a single hole in the lid. It's just a trickle flow. They don't need to be taking mass quantities of syrup in a big hurry. And even with that single hole, it'll probably be empty in about uh, maybe seven to ten days, uh, surely before we get back. Okay, here's another one of our small yards set up to take 24 colonies. It's all double deeps. They don't have any nukes on top, so this can be a lot easier. John must have kicked that box next to you before you opened it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. to all these colonies. It's starting to get cold. I think there's a cold front coming in. These are the canning jar rings that we're putting in the lids. That little lip there uh, and it keeps any rainwater that might run under the bucket from going down the hole. It kind of runs around the lip on that ring right there. They work pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that little lip works right there. Keeps the rainwater from going in. Something I've noticed over the years is that double deeps always overwinter with more bees than singles. If you're running bees just to split and make nukes and shake packages, double deeps definitely provide more bees in the early spring. John, is that uh, colony still got some weight in it? Oh, yes, sir. yeah. Yeah, that okay. thing's very heavy. Okay, That's I guess they just haven't down. started rearing brood yet, so they haven't used much food. Once they start rearing brood in earnest, they'll really start going through the stores. Okay.
Colonies were really well fed in the fall. It's a good thing. We're feeding about one and a half to one right now. There's no rocket science behind all that. I wanted something a little thicker because it's still cold, but yet I didn't want to go really thick because I do want it to have a little bit of a stimulative effect. We're not putting a lot of holes in the plugs, uh, maybe six or so for these double deeps. Nice looking colonies. Yeah, these, these are good colonies. This is another one of the handful of small yards we have set up for 24 colonies. We just have a few of these. Most of our yards range between 32 and 48 with an occasional 60 or 64. Um, this one's just 24. I, I really like the smaller yards, but it's more efficient uh, travel-wise and labor-wise with a yard of 32 or 48. When they get up to be about 60 or 64, it uh, I don't know, it just seems a little bit too chaotic in the yard. Robbing can get out of hand before we can get out of there. These smaller yards are definitely better uh, when you're pulling honey or when you're finding queens and doing that sort of work with, with robbing. Uh, robbing is one of the things that really causes me anxiety, and these smaller yards are better in that respect. I believe all this work's going to pay off. I just looked at the long-term forecast Although we still have lots of cold weather ahead, it looks like we're going to have plenty of days that warm up into the low 50s and mid 50s. Of course, that's Fahrenheit. If the bees can't break cluster, if it's too frigid, they won't make very good use of that liquid syrup. But from what I just saw, I think that's we're going to be fine. It's kind of cold this morning, but uh, it's supposed to warm up to about 51 or 52 today. Should be a good day for the bees.